We realize that if we only have a certain number of operational squadrons of F-22s, we're going to have to do a whole lot with not very much. The F-22s move to engage the enemy force. Their only hope of surviving against these overwhelming numbers will be a secret future weapon, one few today have heard of, capable of astounding destruction. They'll need more firepower to engage the huge enemy formation in front of them. They enlist the help of a pair of nearby B-1Rs. The B-1R, first outlined by Boeing in 2004, is a proposed replacement for the venerable B-1B Lancer, a supersonic strategic bomber in service since 1986. The B-1R has a top speed of Mach 2.2 twice that of other heavy bombers like the B-52. If built, it would be equipped with the same powerful engines the F-22 uses, the Pratt & Whitney F-119. This means the B-1R will have super crews, just like the Raptor. Add advanced radar and a full complement of 20 AIM 120D missiles to the mix, and it is clear how formidable this future weapon could be. Let's say we have a Raptor that's able to detect, localize, and fix an enemy aircraft. Transmit that information back to a command and control circuit or to the bomb truck or the missile truck itself. And then have the missile truck fire the missile against the enemy. The large aircraft, like a B-1, can carry so many missiles that it doesn't really impact when one is fired. And they can also afford to fire two or to ripple missiles if they need to. This sort of highly technological teamwork between multiple air assets is another key aspect of how a future air war will be waged. Before the B-1R attack, the stealthy Raptors will engage the enemy formation by firing their remaining radar-guided missiles. Not enough to take out the whole formation, but enough to sow confusion and panic. They hope this will protect the unstealthy B-1Rs from counterattack. The Raptors move in. A complete radar portrait of the enemy force is drawn from sensors all over the F-22. Even the skin of the plane itself is a sensor called the distributed aperture system. What that is, is on each of the aircraft's skin, along the wings, there's thousands of tiny little receivers, passive receivers, that can take in signals intelligence. Um, these are very good for missile warning. Um, they give you a very good idea of what's coming at you. The F-22s fire their remaining AMRAMs. All that's left in their weapons bays are close-range, heat-seeking missiles. The volley traps the enemy formation, boring in on their mark at over 2,400 miles per hour. At this speed, it takes just seven seconds for the missiles to cover the final five miles to the target. All of a sudden, the bad guy's flight starts falling apart. Everybody's scrapped, trying to get away from the missiles. Yeah, flares, whatever it takes. Then, the Americans complete their one-two punch. Like a team of special forces soldiers deep in enemy territory, the F-22s, still undetected, relay targeting coordinates to the B-1Rs via a secure broadband data link. They ripple fire missile after missile from the AMRAM's maximum effective range of 120 miles. It's a 21st century version of the Archer's fuselage in medieval combat. Missile warning radar in the enemy cockpits once again raises the alarm, but to no avail. The enemy is too disorganized from the Raptor attack to effectively counter. Chaos among the enemy ranks perfectly illustrates the stunning advantage of high technology in a dogfight of the future. 
can you imagine what that would do to a command and control